In this lesson, we're going to focus on the derivatives of sine and cosine functions. So here are some things you need to know. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. And the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So with that information, go ahead and try the following problems. What is the derivative of 4 sine x? And what is the derivative of 8 cosine x? So using the constant multiple rule, the derivative of 4 sine x is going to be 4 times the derivative of sine x. And we know that the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So the answer is simply 4 cosine x. Now for the second example, this is going to be 8 times the derivative of cosine x. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So the final answer is going to be negative 8 sine x. Here's two more examples that you could try. What's the derivative of 3 cosine x minus pi sine x? And differentiate sine x divided by 5. Go ahead and try those two problems. So let's distribute this symbol. The derivative of 3 cosine x minus pi sine x is equivalent to the derivative of 3 cosine x by itself and the derivative of pi sine x using the constant multiple rule. And we have 3 times the derivative of cosine minus pi is a constant and then times the derivative of sine. Let me erase this. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, and the derivative of sine is positive cosine. So the final answer is going to be negative 3 sine x minus pi cosine x. Now let's move on to the next example. Go ahead and find the derivative of sine x divided by 5. Now the first thing I recommend doing is rewriting the expression. So sine over 5 is basically 1 fifth times sine x. So now we can use the constant multiple rule. So it's going to be the constant 1 fifth times the derivative of sine x. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So it's 1 fifth cosine x, or you could simply say cosine x divided by 5. Now, let's say if f of x is sine x, how can we prove that f prime of x is indeed cosine x? How can we show that? Well, we could use the limit definition of a derivative f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So if f of x is sine x, what is f of x plus h? All you need to do is replace x with x plus h. So this is going to be sine x plus h. So therefore, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 sine x plus h minus sine x divided by h. Now, what do we need to do at this point? How can we even simplify this expression? So what recommendations do you have at this point? Now, you need to be familiar with the sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine. So for sine, it's sine alpha plus beta is equal to sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. Now, if we look at the similarities between these two expressions, 
we can replace alpha with x and beta with h. So this is going to be x, h, and then this is x, h. So now we can say that f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, and on top we have sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h and then minus sine x divided by h. Now, I'm going to change the order of the two terms. Basically, I'm going to switch these two terms, and you'll see why. 5 plus 3 and 3 plus 5 is the same, so if you're adding two terms, you can reverse the order. So I'm going to have cosine x sine h, and then plus sine x cosine h minus sine x. Now, even though I have three terms in the numerator, I'm going to separate it not into three fractions, but into two fractions. So I'm going to divide this by h. And so I'm going to have the limit as h approaches 0, cosine x, sine h, divided by h. Now, I'm going to take these two terms and divide it by h. So my next fraction is going to be plus, and I'm going to reverse the order of these two terms. Negative sine x plus sine x times cosine h divided by h. And I need to rewrite the limit expression, so there should be a limit as h approaches 0 in that expression. So I'm going to take this cosine and move it to the front, because it's not affected by this limit expression, only h's. So I'm going to have cosine x, and then times the limit as h approaches 0, sine h divided by h. Now for the second fraction, I can factor out the GCF, which is sine x. So I'm going to take out negative sine x. So I have the limit as h approaches 0, negative sine x, and it's going to be negative sine x divided by itself is positive 1, and sine cosine divided by negative sine, that's going to be negative cosine divided by h. Now I'm going to take this term, move it to the front. So I'm going to have minus sine x, and then the limit as h approaches 0, 1 minus cosine h divided by h. Perhaps you see where I'm going with this. There's two special trigonometric limits that you need to be familiar with. The limit as x approaches 0 for sine x over x is equal to 1. That's one of the limits you need to know. And if you're not sure about this, try plugging a small number close to 0. Sine of 0.1 divided by 0.1 is 0.998. And as you get closer to 0, let's say 0 0.01, and it has to be in radian mode, not degree mode, this is going to be 0.99998. So it gets closer to 1. The second trigonometric limit you need to know is this one. The limit as x approaches 0, 1 minus cosine x over x is equal to 0. So these are the two that you need to know in order to do this problem. So let's go ahead and finish it. So the limit as h approaches 0 for sine h over h, that's going to equal 1. And the limit as h approaches 0 for 1 minus cosine over h, that's going to be 0. So 0 times sine is 0. So the final answer is cosine. So therefore, 
the derivative of sine is equal to cosine. 